Okay, I need you to do me a favor. Be honest. How many of you have children? Raise your hand. Okay, how many of you actually like your children? <laughs> okay, clear your minds, close your eyes, think deeply. What is the most negative thought that you have ever heard or thought about yourself when it came to young people? Now okay. think about a word. Maybe the most positive thing that you've ever heard or thought about a young person. Just a word. Okay. Did it sound like flash mob, incarceration, hypersexualized, or apathetic? Or did it sound like brilliant, talented, powerful? Which list was easier to create? Which list was longer? Do we only blame young people for this list? Or do we only recognize young people for this list? So as we're trying to address this list, right, we think about how do we engage young people, right? That's like the central question. How do we engage young people? Well, what, as PYPM, we're working with young people as they discover the power of their voices using spoken word. A spoken word is poetry that's performed. It's had a rich oral tradition that's been revitalized over the last 30 years with SLAM. And we are one of a number of youth poetry organizations across the country, uh, part of a movement using spoken word with young people. Um, but we're the only ones servicing Philadelphia and Pennsylvania, and we're volunteer-based. But I think we need to recognize the powerful voices, the youth voice that we have in Philadelphia, and support that voice by creating safe spaces for expression. Now, what is a safe space? A safe space, and how do you create a safe space? A, a safe space is a place where you can come and share your story, your experiences, be vulnerable, a place where it's celebrated to be you. So many times we drift away from being vulnerable because we don't want to get hurt. So in 2006, PYPM created a youth night that was dedicated to the youth poetry voice at a time when there were no venues servicing the need of their voice. They were showing up, 100 plus, coming together as a community. Sometimes their parents were coming, closing the generation gap, sharing their stories, whether it was about bullying or school education or food, anything. And as they did this, they found the value of their voice. And once they found the value of their voice, the voice being an internal loudspeaker, reflecting what's going on, on the inside, they took ownership of that voice. And when you take ownership of your voice, you take ownership of yourself. You become responsible for yourself. And as they became more authentic, they became more self-confident, self-aware, self-worth built. And how do we create the safe space? We brought adults together youth together, and we celebrated the fact that it's cool to be educated, it's cool to be smart, it's cool to not know, it's cool to be unsure, it's cool to care about people. And this safe space has gotten so progressive, the adults actually step back sometimes and watch the youth create it for themselves. So in the safe space, right, the space that recognizes there are multiple identities, they can just be themselves, we're asking them to explore to explore themselves, their identities, how they fit or maybe don't fit into this world. We want them to create and tell their own stories without us, without the adult. But at the same time as they're creating, we want them to listen. We want them to listen to each other, to diversify their own human experience by being exposed to other people's stories. So in the safe space, we have a young person who maybe is, has grown up uh, believing that it's okay to discriminate against gay people. Maybe they have homophobic feelings. Then you have in the same space a youth poet who's spitting a piece about their own sexuality, who's spitting a piece about how they've been bullied because of who they are. In the same space, it trans it's transformed into a space of healing. We're in a world that is too divided, a world where those divisions are rarely challenged. And so in this safe space, we find that it becomes a space of transformation where young people are not only exploring their own voice, but they're exploring the stories and experiences of other people. And when it comes to education, we often throw around the terminology, the 21st century thinker, and what does that look like? We want our students to think big. We want them to dream big, think outside the box. We want to make them better thinkers. Poetry transforms the lifeless learner into the lifelong learner with self-sustainable education. It alters the way they view education. They, they begin to ask questions like, why am I learning this? And how am I learning this? And, and why is this important? How is this going to service my life directly? They can become better, critical, and creative thinkers right there on the spot. And too many times with education, we use statistics and mathematics to measure creativity 
and intelligence, depending on numbers. And those same numbers actually turn around and destroy their humanity and their ability to creatively think outside of a box. We want leaders for tomorrow, but how do we get that? We forget that our children are infinite sources of knowledge, untapped wells of wisdom and creativity. For example, four poets from PYPM got together. They did a poem about a homeless war veteran who developed schizophrenia through post-traumatic stress disorder. The poem was called Chamber Music. They explored the identities, the issues, they researched and researched and researched collaboratively together. That's cooperative learning, working together. And then when that poem is read and when it's performed and when everybody sees it on YouTube, it becomes communal learning. Each one, reach one, teach one. They are learning that learning doesn't just happen inside of a classroom. It's happening everywhere around them, especially on the inside, which we seem to neglect the most. When you mix the internal education with the external education, you are now dealing with whole person education. They're realizing that their stories are classrooms, that their lessons and their experiences are nothing but abundant, beautiful chances to change the world. And as they continue and continue to do this, we see them grow and grow and grow. 100% of our seniors last year graduated and went on to college. <laughs> Temple, Columbia, Morehouse, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We've even moved on to developing the Youth Poetry Slam League, which we're putting in schools. Just like every school has a basketball team or a football team, we want to put poetry teams in schools as an intellectual competition. So this Poetry Slam League, actually, we had six teams last year in our first year. We have 18, and we had to cap it. Um, so I think that speaks to just how eager young people are to be heard and how there are adults in this city that are willing to support in our schools. Um, I want to talk about poetry as empowerment. We live in a society that often silences young people, that encourages their silence, that ignores them when they try to speak. And so then spoken word for them becomes an act of resistance. They are not just raising their voices, they're raising awareness about issues that affect themselves, their peers, and how we see them. And I think we need to recognize that spoken word is creating leaders. And it's also a catalyst. So when a young person finds that their voices are valuable, finding that they're inspiring each other, that they're making an impact, they start to look for what are, there, what are, what are other ways maybe that I can make an impact? And so at PYPM, we responded to that call. And we started creating community service projects. The picture that you see here is actually of youth poet um, Hewitt. She's performing at a homeless shelter in front of other youth. We've done food drives. We've done cleanups. So we can see that that spoken word is not just empowering themselves, but it's a catalyst in terms of how can I make a greater impact on my community? Because we don't just want to make better poets. We want to make better people. That's the goal at the end of the day. Y'all ready to hear some poetry, though? Yeah. yeah. I can make some noise. Good, good, good. So there's an event we've been attending for the last five years. We've been here six times. Um, the program, when it started in 2006, it took a, a couple of kids up to New York City and then Chicago and then San Jose, San Jose and D.C., Los Angeles. And this year we went to San Francisco to the Brave New Voices International Poetry Competition. Thanks to help from uh, Southwest Airlines and the city of Philadelphia, Knights Arts and, and Lomax Foundation, we've been able to progress and do a lot. 50 plus teams these young people were able to interact with. 50 groups of young people they would have never ever met. Give a round of applause from t for two members from this year's team that traveled to San Francisco. Shamira Nelson and Kai Davis. Go. The clan of men conquered the earth. They laid down the laws of the land and ruled with an iron fist. They enslaved the women and imprisoned them in bras, but then one day, a tribe of women heard the feminine cry for mercy. 
Two women traveled from afar to liberate all women from the tyranny of men. One, skilled in the art of the monkey. The other, a master of the tiger. They were called the Femininjas. We are the Femininjas. We kung fu attack misogyny in the streets. Hide behind bushes, trees, hedges. And other types of foliage, waiting to karate chop cat calling construction workers. We poke plays in the eye with the samurai sword of death. Ray Ray down the street won't ever see us coming. We jump in front of boys that prey on girls and make them look us in the eye. The eye of the tiger. We hang upside down beneath buses, waiting to stealth strike Daquan and his homies for every. Ayo, short. We can punch the word slut out of dictionaries, string of the word hell out of rappers' vocabularies, place booby traps on a set of booty-shaking music videos, then slice the green screen with our katanas, spelling out femininges. You want to know where we came from? <laughs> we hide under the desks of chauvinistic CEOs, just waiting for them to sexually harass female secretaries so we could shoot darts in between their legs. <laughs> before escaping into the vents with our warrior cry. Uterus! <laughs> we stalk 10-year-old girls in makeup with ninja baby wipes. You're, You're brutal about that. that. Hi-ya! <laughs> we sit in barbershops and wait in the shrouds of hair clippings, ninja star the hell out of pretty, pretty much everyone in there. <laughs> no man can match up to the superiority of our feminine ninja focus or know his moves before he makes them. We crouch in the shadows of rapists and behind the skirts of women whose society said we're asking for it, we'll replace every E in the word women with a Y. With, with our, our fists. fists. We use a five-point palm exploding heart technique on anyone that suppresses female sexuality. Well, well again, yeah, you, you religious fundamentalists. fundamentalists. We sit in unattended cocktails, waiting to attack any roofy, slipping, jerk-wide, date-raping morons. Our voices will travel through the sky, leaving sexist men shaking in their pants while we sit wide awake, waiting for tomorrow to come. Feminine just never sleep. We meditate and levitate. With every rising sun, we'll begin our journey again, continuously washing the world clean with feminism, bringing glory to women, dishonor to pimps, players, and misogynists. When night falls, just know that we are there. Shielded by the darkness of oppression, just watching. Waiting to strike. Our black shinobi gear and feminine your muscles will be soaked in sweat. Our, Our armpits will smell, smell of victory. <laughs> we'll run to the rooftop of the tallest building in the city screaming. Women of the world, just call us when you need us. Who run the world? Feminine just. Wow, that's poetry as engagement, it's poetry as exploration, that's poetry as empowerment, that's poetry as freedom. We've seen so many of these youth poets transformed. Yes, because of PYPM, we'd like to say, but because we believe in the power of spoken word. And we think, uh, I think one, one youth poet in particular stands out to me when I think of transformation. Um, I think of, of Kavi. Okay, um, Kavi a day. I meet her in a workshop about 2007. She's writing some of the most beautiful stuff. At times, I think she was writing better than me, and she's about 15 years old. And she did not ever want to speak up and say her poetry aloud. She didn't think it was good enough. I think it's great, but she didn't. 2009, as time went on, she progressed, she grew. She started speaking up, she started performing more. She became more comfortable with her voice, and she went on to make the team in 2009 that traveled to Chicago with 13 other youth. Then, in 2010, she made the team again and traveled to Los Angeles with another 13 youth. And then she came back and she battled homelessness. And when she got her place, she was able to take in other youth poets who were struggling with the same issues. She became a better mentor. She became a role model. And in 2011, she wasn't only a mentor or a role model. She coached the team to the 2011 Brave New Voices International Poetry Competition Championship in San Francisco. That's transformation. That means that we have the number one slam team in the world, Philadelphia. 
That's what that means. When I, when I think about transformation, I also think about Alana Gooden, um, who I spoke about a little bit earlier. Um, Alana also battled homelessness when she, when she came to PYPM. As a result, she was failing school. Um, over the course of a year of being involved with spoken word through us um, and through her peers and through herself, really, um, she got back into school, back, got back into honor roll, and is actually a student at Temple University. I would say she's one of the most powerful voices that Philadelphia has in terms of uh, uh, bringing awareness to, to the youth voice and to issues that affect them. Um, and really, she's an ambassador for Philadelphia. One of her goals is to change how people see Philadelphia. Uh, so without any further ado, it's my honor to uh, introduce Alana Gooden. Speak truth. Speak truth. I speak for those who have words playing hide and seek in the depths of their throats. Words that, that dangle from tonsils, swinging back and forth, only to reach the tip of the tongue to retreat back to where they came from. I speak for those who are scared and can't speak up for themselves, so they fall victim to the hypnotic ways of the rap trends today. I speak for the youth of my community, where they trade in bubble gum for bullets, hopscotch for handguns, double dutch for blunt. See, this, this is where virginity is a game that these young girls play and always seem to lose, and these young boys treat bodies like sketch pads, etching lead against skin, rearranging features, making Picassos out of people. See, there's no more breakdance or beatbox, because gunshots composed in snare bass we choreograph our steps to, and these rap lyrics are what we live by. I spot little kids showing along concrete, talking about how they think they are big means to. These rappers not realize the things that they teach will never mind all that. It's my time to speak. So as I stand in a room full of beautiful black young men, I say, carrying a gun, does it make you a soldier, boy? Because these goons can care less about your pretty boy swag. Bullets bar to these teeth, leaving black men in black body bags. No more tic-tac-toe. You just get your toe tag, case closed. When will you realize that your life is more than a game? And to my young women, will you ever discover that your beauty doesn't reside in a makeup kit? Stop labeling yourself as bad. Whatever happens to being beautiful, you have inspiration embedded in your smile and a gift to give life that alone makes you gorgeous. So, um, excuse me, little mama, but you could say I'm on duty to teach these young girls that within lies your beauty. You don't have to have a Coke bottle shape or be your Barbie. So, whoever told you that nonsense, yeah, I'm sorry. But you are more than what you think and way smarter than what you know. So it's time to stop being these hip-hop robots and dicty within to discover the true individual that you are. So I speak for my people. Because if I don't, then you tell me who will. Thank you. Come on, step up. Step up. Come up here. 